And li- literally, right. I've logged on multiple jump town servers, and I've seen a queue, a line of people, like six, seven players, just all solo players, coming to jump town, singing Da Hu Dore, just like Whoville. Like, oh, you got your drugs? Yeah, okay, I'm next. And then the thing shits out a box. And then they go <laughs> back to their ship. And uh, it's just this, like, peaceful thing. And so I took it upon myself the other day to spread the true meaning of Jump Town. All right, welcome back to Stuck in the Nail. This is episode five, y'all. Welcome back. (laughs) For those of you who have been listening to all five episodes, thank you for sharing hours of your life with us and listening to this uh, intelligent, sometimes not intelligent bullshit. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Right? But uh, I'm Daft Hobbit. With me, Echo 5 Romeo. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good, man. How are you? Dude, solid. It's uh, like a couple days after Christmas right now. How was your holiday? Good, sir. It was fantastic. Lots of good family time. One of the better Christmases I've had in a very, very long time. Same, bro. Same, bro. That's awesome, dude. I'm glad for you. I had a pretty good one myself. And uh, I think today we wanted to start talking about CIG because they did set this last patch up pretty good for the holidays. Uh, three point oh one six. Yes. Three point one six. What What do you got to say about that? Just, I mean, my hats off to you, CIG. Like everybody I know is in the forums on Spectrum complaining about how it's content light and all. But honestly, like, uh, and I think we had talked about this, like, not on the podcast, but just in the org, it's like in the community that if there wasn't going to be content, hopefully they do a lot of backend stuff. They 1000% did a bunch of backend stuff. I don't know if they just rebooted the servers or added <laughs> some tech or what. I mean, it's obviously not in the, um, the patch notes, but they did something. It's very evident that they did. So everything seems to be working fine. Fuck my first time logging into 3.16. I was in Lorville and it felt like a living, breathing place. Like the NPCs were up, they were moving, they were interacting with the environment. There were players that were running around and getting their stuff. And <laughs> uh, man, I just, I, I think it was the first time that Star Citizen really felt full to me. Felt and alive. Um, yeah, I felt alive. Felt like I was an actual living universe instead of this vast emptiness of space. And I, I thank you. Thank you, CIG. Yeah. I mean, my hat's on right now, but it will be off to you at some point. Uh, but yeah, the CIG did a great job. I think this this last patch three three point one six is just it's performance wise. I mean, I've been playing five to six hours on the same server consistently. Um, that's been happening for a lot of patches lately, but you know, no problems. Um, bed logging seems to be working. Like they did a lot. So again, CIG, thank you very much. We yeah. see you as much as we yep. bitch about stuff um, on this podcast and we will continue to do so. Mm-hmm. Just know that we appreciate you CIG. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what are the pros? What Have you ridden a Knox bike yet? Um, I did in the PTU. That was pretty fun. It's fun. Fun fact that kind of looks like a drop pod CIG. Just, just throw that out there. If you turn it vertically. And it's essentially, is. <laughs> you yeah. know, like uh, as I mean, far as can... like the content for for like what little content was in 316 i haven't really i haven't really like targeted it to play it but you know i've obviously been partaking in jump town which we'll get to um i just man i'm just every time i log into 316 i'm just amazed at how how many frames i'm getting how well the npcs are moving that just feels real to me now so it does yeah, it's you're it's a good point and uh, I, I haven't really been paying attention to it, so I, I should go back and visit those things. I'm always scared to go to the big cities, um, just like in real life. You know, I'm a country boy, kind of. Not really. I grew up in the suburbs, but I just don't like big cities. 
So maybe that's it. But <laughs> it seems to be holding true in Star Citizen. You just don't go there because your frame rates will drop. You know, you see people like shooting heroin underneath a bridge at Lorville, you know. They're like, oh, yeah, it, it is improved. It still sucks to go to the big cities like FPS wise. FPS, like, yeah. uh, but I mean, once we get the Gen 12 renderer uh, and all this other, you know, um, engine stuff, I think I think it'll, it'll, it'll improve. But it was it was genuinely a refreshing like I felt like I was playing a brand new game. And That's that good. was awesome. Well, shame on me for not like paying attention, because when I spawned in, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> get me to the orbital station. And there, that's where I reside just because of the frame rates. But uh, I should go sure. back. I should go back and test it out. Let's um, go on an adventure. Let's go well, get Kappa Frappa. Kappa Frappa's at Wamburger. Yeah, yeah Wham- what other restaurants are in the verse? You got the hot dogs. You got the noodles. We got Wamburger. Dude, I just want the, a good burrito stand, you know, like just uh, mm, like give me a good taco stand. Let me get some street tacos. Yeah. But we do have the burritos, the space burritos. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many good things to eat in Star Citizen that we have. For sure. Really. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I'm really excited, though. Maybe we can talk a little bit about social social interactions within Star Citizen. I think that's going to be really cool. Just a yeah. place to like the the Grim Hex bedding facility. Again, this is all first person stuff. You're going to be experiencing these things through it. You already are. So I want to go to Grim Hex and buy all the homies some pixel pixel whiskey, like we were talking about. And I want to yeah. bet on other players racing Knox bikes, racing, you know, three hundred eyes or whatever's out there, the M fifties. Like I want to bet on that, and I'm so excited for that. Or like maybe there's just NPCs we can bet on, you know, like a I, r- yeah. I think it's only a matter of time before one of the racing orgs or communities start doing Knox races, like player hosted Knox races around uh, Grim Hex. Yeah, and I think we need to participate more in that. I want to do the Daymar Rally at one point. Um, okay, but yeah, let's do it. Imagine the 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 possibilities, dude. If 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 CIG could just give us some more ground tools. Um, which is what we're going to get into here with Jumptown as well. We're always going to be talking about FPS tools and, and stuff that we need in the community. And a lot of it has been very apparent in Jumptown. Um, so maybe we can segue into Jumptown right now. Let's, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Like 316 patch, have we missed anything? No, I um, think we nailed it. Yeah. And also uh, the Knox bike. Intended. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> we stuck in the nailed it. Uh, <laughs> but the Knox bike and the Dragonfly, just FYI, they're excellent troop delivery vehicles now because you just drive them out the yeah. back of a c2 they fall down and they don't fall at like that weird like slow motion fall anymore they like legit fall uh and then they get you know the uh <clears throat> grav lev technology kicks in and you got this cushion little landing and you're like mm, and then you're zipping around hell yeah so we, we should explore that maybe we'll throw some videos up do some testy tuesdays yeah, I imagine that, that that soft cushion landing from Atmosphere is probably going to go away uh, eventually, but we'll enjoy it in yeah. the meantime. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point, I ho- maybe. Anyway, um, Jumptown. Pros. Let's do it. Cons. What do you think CIG did right at Jumptown? Because let's, I, let me back up here. I was very much involved in the original Jumptown, the organic player made event that happened because CIG put a drug outpost hidden on Yela. Fucking mm-hmm. awesome. Like oh, the yeah. stories at Jumptown, the more like the organic fights that happened and the epic moments was unreal. So do you think CIG has recreate or has captured that with this? So 2. I'm coming I'm experiencing Jumptown for the first time uh-huh. i i did not participate in the old jump town so i don't have any frame of reference for what it was like i mean i've heard stories from you and other people that have, that participated and it sounded awesome mm-hmm. um I, I think that i think that, that there's too <laughs> much like teddy bearing going on in in this jump town where it's like yes I don't know. The other jump town, the original jump town sounded very gnarly. Like it sounded like this is where you fucking go if you want to get into PvP, right? Exactly. And yeah. I while I we have experienced PvP there and we will continue to like drive PvP at those places. I don't think that it like it doesn't to me what I've heard and what I've 
participated in, they don't match up. Yes. And I can, I can fully, you're exactly correct. What you've heard is because from my experience at the original jump town, it's, uh, it, 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 it smells of it, it, it tastes of it, but it is not jump town. The original jump town it's jump town 2.0 and you're exactly mm-hmm. right with that term teddy bearing yes so here's some examples the original jump town nobody knew where it was like it's not a waypoint marker you can't quantum to it um, if you had friends there you could at the time uh, try risking it and try jumping to your friend but that mechanic wasn't always reliable at the time now that it is you know, that's what people do. The, you, you can get someone at Jump Town and jump to them. So as far as, like, accessibility, this Jump Town, I think, is too accessible. It takes away some of the skill that was required for a player to get there. So if you wanted to get to Jump Town and you didn't have friends there, there was no mission to accept. There was no way mo- waypoint marker. You literally had to fly by line of sight and just terrain recognition because there wasn't even a bearing compass in your cockpit anymore or at the time so you you had to fly there it was a lot more skillful to get there you felt like you achieved something just by finding jump town there's there's this unique like discovery feeling like ooh, and then you've done it so many times because uh back when i did it i was in a fighter org like fighter pilot and you know i knew the route to fly so I could get back and, and forth and get refueled and restocked and rearmed and then get back to the fight fairly quickly just because I knew exactly where to go. And, you know, you, timing your jump around the planet, turning off your, your engines so you come out of quantum at the right exact time and then flying down to the planet, recognizing the terrain. So that's missing because um, you don't need it. You just need to accept the mission and then just get to the jump. You still have to fly manually, but it, it's lost its luster. So that's one thing. Um, and then the, I don't know, the payouts just seemed to be bigger and they also had a lot bigger craft involved because you could land and fill the cargo bay of a Caterpillar. I haven't seen a single Caterpillar at Jump Town 2.0. Have you? No, I didn't see a Reclaimer though. Oh yeah, we, uh, <laughs> that was interesting. I don't know why someone brought a Reclaimer, but, uh, mm-hmm. It's always cool seeing a reclaimer from time to time. You're like, oh, yeah, that's in the that game. That ship exists. Yeah. And it is gargantuan. It's fucking huge. Um, so I think we should do some PvP on that because um, there's a lot of tiny corridors, a lot of cool ways mm-hmm. to breach into it as well. So we, maybe we can play around with that. But yeah, um, but yeah Jump Town, you know, the original Jump Town, you, you had a lot bigger ships. And, you know, it, it took time for those ships to be filled with cargo. So... I feel like they missed an opportunity to involve some bigger cargo as well. So, yeah, we have the boxes we can pull out. The drug machine shits them out every 30 seconds. Um, so we can get the mechanics well, down on that. But it would be cool I, I if think a bigger th- ship could do something and like that. Keep in mind, I, I didn't, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, like, the biggest cargo ship at the time was the Caterpillar. It was. When the original Jump Town was out, right? So it makes sense. And, and the way players act, like, if it's a new ship, like... <laughs> Last year's ship is completely forgotten. Um, and, and this year, the new hotness is the C2. And then next year, when they release another cargo ship, inevitably, mm-hmm. um, that'll be the new hotness. And the C2 will be forgotten. And I'm sure somebody like us will create a podcast and be like, yeah, I remember Jump Town 2.0. And, yeah. you know, the C, there's no C2. You know what I mean? So Yeah, it's like, different. <laughs> it, the, I, I want to... I wanna, from my perspective, I think it's a really cool way to sort of introduce the idea of single-handedly moving cargo. Mm. Um, you know, they've talked about this before, that, that that's going to be a thing. And, like, the fact that this thing kind of just poops out little boxes of drugs, and then you have to, like, create an assembly line to get people there. But I guess for me, there's, there's little to no danger there, right? Like, yeah. I think the when you see you know somebody's new to the server when they come in and they go is jump town safe yeah and it's like yeah that was the meme no of the original it's not jump town, jump town yeah. safe question mark no right never that was the original just assume like, that it's not yeah but yeah the, the so the 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 moving boxes is cool i would like to see an option where you could load maybe with a you know maybe the profit's not as big maybe there's less risk involved but you could load the cargo grid of a C2. 
Um, I'd like to see orgs being able to maximize profits because, you know, we were down there for six hours with like 20 people or whatever was securing it um, in Jumptown 2.0. We were down there for a long, long time, the entire event for the first one. And we made mm -hmm. like $9 million, which is cool. But I remember orgs putting up way bigger numbers than that. And maybe that's like something that they don't want to have happen again. They don't want the economy to break. But, yeah. uh, you know, if it's a big operation like that, you know, I'd, I don't know. I mean, well, I, on the topic yeah. of, of ground tools, I would like to see us have the ability. And I don't know that we've tried this yet, but like getting a hand cart, right? And, and loading that onto a ship and pushing that, that cart into the building loading that card up and then, you know, pushing that card out and onto a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've just been doing it with tractor beams right now, which is still cool, right? Like we have this really cool assembly line going. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be cool. Like that to me just seems like a more efficient way to sort of like move. Shit. I don't know in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have access to those carts that I know of. Like, I'm sure somebody's going to be like, yeah, Echo, you go get a cart anywhere. You dip shit. <laughs> but I don't know where that's at. Yeah. Maybe there are orgs doing that. I don't know. And uh, what I've seen happen at Jump Town 2.0, uh, you're talking about teddy bear shit, care bears. Yes. Uh, that's a common term. Anybody who doesn't really like to engage in combat, I'm sorry if you're listening to this. This is like a combat ground FPS podcast, by the way. Uh, so w w you're called a care bear. <laughs> if you don't like yeah. combat and you, you want to be happy, go lucky, like go ahead and do that. That's awesome. There's, there's going to be plenty of places for you to do that in the verse and make a lot of money and make friends. But like uh, jump town is a PVP place. And a lot of people were going down there with intentions to just make money, like, like typing in chat, getting mad at the server for doing PVP or conducting mm -hmm. combat at jump town. And li literally right. I've logged on multiple jump town servers and I've seen a queue, a line of people, like six, seven players, just all solo players, coming to Jump Town, singing Da Hu Dore, just like Whoville. Like, oh, Dore, da -hu. Or, oh, you got your drugs? Yeah, okay, I'm next. And then the thing shits out of box. Da Hu Dore. And then they go <laughs> back to their ship. And uh, it's just this like peaceful thing. And so I took it upon myself the other day to spread the true meaning of Jump Town. <laughs> and I just went in a stock gladius and I just shot the shit out of anybody. And I said, Hey, if you want to mm -hmm. land at jump town, I'm, I'm securing this place. It's a hundred grand land here and you can get all the boxes you want. Just pay me a hundred grand, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not, I don't consider myself a pirate, but like whatever it's jump town, dude. Like there's no rules. And so I feel like this right. Teddy Graham shit is happening. It's teddy bear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think it, it doesn't foster, uh, you know, teamwork. It doesn't foster organized gameplay. It doesn't foster any of that. And I understand that there are a lot of people that play this game as a single entity, like a, as a, an, an, an individual, right? But mm -hmm. um, th there's plenty of other gameplay out there for you. Like, yeah, you mining. can go do all the missions. You can mine. You can, you can do PvP bounties or uh, PvE bounties. You can do ground missions. Like, there's plenty of PvE content out there. Don't force a PvP event to be PvE. Like it's it yeah. just if we're on the server, that's not ever gonna happen. Like, yeah, just just know that. Like we want that combat, we want that action. And if you don't, then either go to another server or get some boys and come saddle up. Yeah, Take us out. Bring you know? your friends. Bring mm -hmm. your friends. I I shot down probably thirty craft over jump down, and like. People were trying to want like solo man a constellation or they were solo manning a redeemer that they just bought probably. And like they're, they're getting mad that a gladius could shoot them down or like people are showing up in light body armor, wondering why they're getting murked by a guy in heavy Two armor. Tacked. Yeah. With a yeah. machine gun and they have a arc light pistol and they're in a, an undersuit sometimes. And they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, Jump Town was very, very clearly a PvP. Its origins were PvP. Its origins were like the wildest of the West you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of coordination um, for an organization to make a lot of money. You could lock down Jump Town and have four, five, six cargo ships getting filled, uh, like well, one at a time, but you'd have a queue of 
I think max, the only thing I, I was participated in, <clears throat> we had three caterpillars and we thought we, we were doing pretty good. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I feel like there is a lack of teamwork needed though, because a, a single person can come down to jump town and take, take 10 boxes and make a really good amount of money, which is great. Yeah. But like, there's not as much of a threat anymore and it, it should require more teamwork. Like, I don't know. What do you think? What's something that teamwork could be used at in jump town? I feel like it's lacking that. Um, yeah, man. I like, I'm just trying to think of it from like a single player's perspective. Like right now, uh, like it's pretty, it, it is pretty restrictive to, to players that, that are just, you know, like bring an Avenger Titan down, you know, they might get nine or 10 boxes before somebody, an org like us or a community like us gets in there. Um, you know, and then it's kind of on us, whether we let them continue doing what they're doing or, um, you know, help them out or don't or push them away or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the intention isn't to grief. Like, Cause I think a lot of people are like, Oh, you're griefing us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like dude you're in a you're in a like you're in a pvp in a zone. PvP, like you're in a game like that's like with other people we're not griefing you we're just yeah we want to hold jump down we want that so as far as like making it more stream i yeah i don't know like the old the old way of loading cargo onto a ship is gone right gone are the days or coming gone are the days yeah. of you walking to a terminal picking your ship hitting a button and instantaneously and your cargo is full right yeah. And so if you really want to maximize your your money making at Jump Town, I mean you really do need a crew. If not for security, the very fact that having five dudes with tractor beams or a you know like a cart, yeah, or is way more efficient than than having one dude in a in an event like you yeah, sure, you come maybe make 50 60k, but mm-hmm. when you leave and come back, is it going to be open? Right. Are there going to be people there? Are you going to be shot? You don't know. So make friends. And that's know? that's what's bothersome is that there is no reward for having a crew, an efficient crew. Maybe you can get yeah. a little quicker, but that machine will still kick out one box of drugs per 30 seconds, every 30 seconds. Boom, boom. There's no reward. If we, if we show up to jump town with 20 people, we should have a few more bodies involved with that process somehow that speeds things up so we can maximize the profits. If you want to be yeah, a one okay. solo player, like... That's the thing. There's no reward for teamwork. And there's yeah. also a very, very smaller reward. I, I, I guess it stacks up. If you're a criminal and you choose the criminal side of Jump Town and you're going there to, like, sell the drugs illicitly, uh, you get a bunch of bonuses per box at the end. So you can't – that can add up to lots and lots of millions later. But the risk is so high because if you have a crime stat, you have to have a crime stat to get the illegal mission – and then you go there. It, the comrade is not down, so now you need a team to go put the comrade down. So I like that aspect. So now the yeah. comrade's down. Now you can be a criminal there, um, but still, if somebody shoots you, uh, like there's a high chance you're going to go to prison, um, right. or you're going to wake up in Grim Hex at the very least, and then you got to get back there. So the the risk, like that, bonuses in my mind, it's not worth it. I'd rather just get get the uh, you know the uh, the good mission, the good guys, and I'd go fill yeah. it up and make the money that way. But, like, literally one man can go make as much money as a 20-man org there. So there's a disconnect. You know, Xeno yeah. Threat was, like, there's a lot of teamwork involved. You had people, like, talking about, okay, I'm getting the Diluther Mex. I'm getting this blue one, the red, green one. I, I can't remember their names of them. <laughs> but, like, we, yeah. had, we had to go get something and take it somewhere for a reason. What if CIG yeah. could introduce uh, some of that? What if we needed to collect the materials to make the drugs at an exponentially faster rate. Um, mm-hmm. So that would make some more teamwork gameplay. Now that group that owns the server, you know, that 20 man team that pops in, they can go, you know, you guys go here, you guys go that you guys get these ingredients for the drugs and let's make them faster. Right. Or maybe there's okay. like some other places that are supplying that nearby. Maybe there's like some nodes or something. Maybe there's something over here, like a click away that's pumping fluid into the drug machine. I don't know. Like if yeah, there's a little like bit a more moisture farmer equipment <laughs> or something that's like pumping the, 
pumping the drugs out of the ground faster. Or I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Or like, what if you, uh, and you got to protect that if it goes down, like, or if you can keep that up and running, like, right. That pumps the drugs out faster. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Or like you're, you're there to get the drugs anyway and go turn them into the UEE. Right. So what if there are like little random stash houses that pop up in the microtech system? So now you have to hold jump town and get that money. And then you get these huge bonuses for hitting and killing all the NPCs at that, that place and then capturing the drugs right. there. There's already drug missions in the game and you can go destroy all the shit. Right. So it's like, I don't know well, what the, yeah, why not have a, a pirate, a P, like a AI pirate come in every once in a while to, to come, you know, like, yeah. And it maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just varying levels of like. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a dude, an AI, in a in an Avenger, and then maybe there's a Valkyrie that comes and it drops five or six guys. Out. I don't know. I like something. And I don't. I don't yeah. know if they have the mechanics for that shit yet. But like, sure. there's already drug missions in the game, but you have to go destroy the drugs. Like, so what do they want? Does the UEE want you to destroy the drugs on contraband on site, or they want you to bring it in and turn it in? Because yeah. those missions, those drug missions in the bunker, they're the same drugs in the in the sure. in the lore. So like, yeah, it would be nice to have to load those up and yeah. take them out as well. You know, <clears throat> what like, if we could get paid just as much from doing that? Like, we would be doing bunker missions all the time. We'd be like drug mission, yes, go clear the bunker, kill the bad guys, logistically move all that shit out. It's a nightmare, but like, if it pays yeah. well, then we'll do it. Um, so there's a lot of things missing at Jumptown, I think. So us being in a tw like how many people have we had at Jumptown like 20 the last 25 three times plus 25 last plus night? sometimes yeah. yeah sometimes we just own the whole server it's really boring Jumptown is so boring now and like maybe that's because we have too many people in the server and we own it but like we're just sitting here watching like three or four people and we'll get some some randos we call them indentured servants they'll come in and <laughs> and we'll pay them a set fee to just load boxes for us and so we're all just standing there with our guns out looking and intimidating it's kind of cool but um yeah i just wish there was more it teamwork. does get boring i sat there on jump down last night for like four hours yeah just on, on post on security like Making sure, you know, Nothing Hunter happened. was standing at the door checking IDs. Yeah, making sure you? that you doing here? the 10 other people on the server don't rally in their prospectors and come fight us. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'd like to see a little bit more danger. Like, and it could be cops and robbers, right? Like, you could have the UEE or that station security, you know, that system security come in and it shoots at anybody that's got a crime stat. And then inversely, you could have pirates come in that shoot anybody that it isn't a pirate, yes. you know, like, and it's just kind of that revolving environmental effect at jump town. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that they tried to stay as close to the original jump town as possible. Um, and I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, for the Fairly. most part, right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun. I think they could now, now the developers have this gameplay in their hands and why not make it spicy? You know, exactly. you know, we're at a 50 player cap, you know, that orgs are going to, lock this down and then if you get 45 people from your org to join like there's no danger it's just us sitting there for four hours while like three dudes load up a c2 <laughs> take off which is another gripe i have like even taking the mission i don't know if i didn't notice it but like i don't get credit if i don't fly a ship to drop off boxes yeah so, we the only way uh, you get paid is if you actually disseminate those funds to your guys using yeah. the trader so it's completely thing. useless half the time i don't even take the because I, I know i'm going to be on the ground as security i'm not going to fly around with boxes so half the time i don't even take the the mission right yeah like, it's kind of useless to me i'm also if i'm i might be misremembering so someone in the chat if someone whoever can fix this let me know if you if i'm wrong but at the old jump town, there there was a level of scarcity as well because the supply and demand of the economy at the time and still is, it was like a false, uh, it, it was like a mimicked or like a simulated supply and demand. So like you could go fill your cargo ships and you could sell a lot of it, but like it would also, then you'd have to trickle sell it. Like, okay, I can only mm -hmm. sell 10 units at a time. And that's a lot if you mm -hmm. have a full caterpillar. So like. Um, but yeah, sometimes the drug lab wouldn't be producing and sometimes it would. So it was like this hit or miss thing. So then you'd try a new server sometimes and then it would be like, so there was uh, a le level of scarcity here, but 
there's nothing urgent really about this one. It's like you just want to lock down Jump Town for the whole event so you can maximize your profit. But like, right? Yeah, and like it really meant something too. If if we saw an enemy like caterpillar taken off and we swarmed it and we blew it up, then we knew like if that thing was fully loaded, then no one got it. Right. It, it's, it's not going to reproduce more. Like it was a scarcity thing. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you don't, you don't want to blow up the drugs. Like we, we want to protect those. That's money. That's value. So we're not going to yeah. blow up this ship for X, Y, Z. We need to employ different tactics. Um, and that's what we ended up doing <laughs> During that Care Bear Teddy Bear line, uh, me and the homies, we lined them up and we incapacitated everybody, just shot them in the legs. And we announced over General Comms, hey, we're taking over your ships. <laughs> so we ended up, you know, they're all Care Bear in it one by one, Dahu Dore. Uh-huh-huh. And then we just smoke them. They're incapacitated. We take all their, their weapons away from them. And then, uh, we remove all their drugs from their ship, put it on our ship. So we're like, hey, thank you for loading our ship, right? They didn't know they were, but they did. And then we blew up all their ships so they were stranded there. They didn't have any weapons, so they had no choice but to just be our indentured servitude, or our indentured servants. So that's the true spirit of Jump Town. Mm-hmm. We're here. We're going to take advantage of you because you're not with a group of friends, and you're not ready for combat. So boom, 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 boom. We're in charge now. If you want to ride back to Tressler, <laughs> then you got to work for us. That, that, that's what yeah. happened. We had three players load boxes for us. We ended up paying them like, you know, 25 grand, which is nothing to what they could have made. Right. And people got mad. Uh, are we are we bad? No. I think there's some interesting gameplay, too, uh, now with a lot of the mechanics they're in, like with distortion weapons, as far as, like, FPS goes, that – when you do see that ship take off, let's disable it. Yeah. You know, let's disable it and try to board it. But again, we're still lacking some, you know, some breaching. Like, it's just better to shoot the door with a rocket launcher than it is to sit there and open it up with a fucking torch. Yeah. But, you know, there, there could be some interesting gameplay there where we do board a ship after it's been distortioned to yes. all hell and has no power. And then, you know, getting inside and, 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 and 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 I, yeah, I guess that's piracy, I suppose. But it's not like grief. It's not meant to be griefing. It's these are mechanics that are in the game that we have even on the ground doing blowing up ships and, and, and you know making these other players work for you. I mean, is it fun for for everyone? Probably not. But like <laughs> you, you very much have the opportunity to leave, you know, and go yeah, somewhere else. And, you do and, and do it. But and then that. But again, it comes back to planning on your part, right? Like, did you set your your spawn at Tressler, did you know what I mean? Like, or wherever the, the events happening, you yeah. know, like, did you, you know, so like it makes these players have to, I really appreciate that. There's your time is like one of the biggest things that this game requires of you. Right. And that. Yeah. The, the cultivates proper, and all kinds of things, but the proper decisions need to be made. Did you, mm-hmm. did you bring a med gun? Did you bring a med pen? Did you, do you have ammo? Do you have, you know, do you have your spawn set? Like, that's important. And, yeah, yeah. it makes you think. It makes you step back and stop and reset. And uh, I think you're onto something there, though. But it, is it really – I mean, if you call it piracy, but essentially when the U.S. Coast Guard disables a ship, a drug runner, right, in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, they shoot the engine out with a fifty caliber. Then they board that vessel, take everyone into mm-hmm. custody, and then take all of their contraband – and take the ship yeah. in for evidence. Is that that's essentially the same act as piracy, but it's just sanctioned by a government, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's the same thing. We're just yeah, yeah. So I mean it is and it isn't piracy, but all the Care Bears, all the uh, you know all the PVEers look at it as as griefing, and it's like that's not what we're doing. We don't no. know if you're a pirate or not. We have no idea what your alignment is. So we're going to shoot you in the leg, take you into custody. We're gonna take your drugs Mm -hmm. and then we're going to force you to load those drugs up so that we can return them to the security (laughs) depot and they can be destroyed properly. Right. Like it just depends what kind of flavor text you put on it. And in the same token, a pirate or could be like, yes, we're going to kill you. We're going to capture you or kill you. And then we're going to take the drugs and we're going to go sell it to our boys down the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's the same thing, just different labels. One is called good. One is called bad. Right. Um, 
And that's why we'll leave it up to you guys. If you watch our videos and you come hang out with us and see, you're like, are Branders privateers? Are they good or are they bad? We'll let you decide that. We're, we're just going to do our thing. Um, we wear gray armor for, for a reason. <laughs> we do. Yeah, we wear gray. We, we like the gray. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it kind of also jumped down. To finish up jump down here, uh, some tools were missing. Uh, we've already harped on them on this podcast, but it would just enhance gameplay in every facet of the game if we had a compass. And also, I don't really feel like stealth is a thing at all in the game. What do you? What's your thoughts on stealth right now, Echo? The word stealth, uh, as as far as CIG putting that mechanic in, I think is kind of a ridiculous notion. Um, because stealth to me doesn't mean hitting a button and my ship, you know, disappears off a radar. That's not stealth. Cloaking. I mean, I, I guess it is, but it's it's not the only thing stealth could be. I mean, stealth is dropping troops off in a retaliator and then having a cutlass black, you know, that's also stealth, right? Like stealth is not wearing all black and then yeah. like, that's not that's yeah. not stealth. Like, wearing a ninja not, suit doesn't make you sneaky. Right. Yeah, we got onto the con on the topic of stealth uh, during a conversation in the in the community, and it was you know, well, but what does stealth really mean? Because it was again the cutlass steel had just come out, and we they were like, well, the prowler's still better because it's got stuff. And I'm like, really, what do you mean by it has stealth? Like, have you really thought about when you say that? Well, you know, maybe they won't be able to detect us except for like 500 meters out. Well, okay, that's an easy defeat. I just put a LPOP four LPOPs 500 meters away from from you whatever know, you're where defending. i want to protect and now i can detect you out a thousand meters yes so and i can keep doing that so it doesn't like that whole mechanic of like well my you don't show up on radar till a specific like that's that's irrelevantly it's irrelevant like it is it stealth is. yes but it is not the only thing that is considered stealth right yes sticking a dude in another discord or voice comms that's also stealth right hey go glean information from this from this group right that stuff. Yes, it's just being undetected in any way. And I think mm -hmm. the best way to be undetected in Star Citizen is to be on the ground. There are no tools for yeah. anyone. I guess they're going to be um, able to scan. You're going to be able to scan like what's in front of the ship for for ground or for life forms on the ground now. That's coming out mm -hmm. soon from what I've heard. Um, but like so many pilots don't have the time or the wherewithal. And that's a lot a lot of ground to cover and scan. So if you don't have the proper formation and like SOP to scan the ground, mm -hmm. it, it will be easily defeated if the pilots aren't yeah. coordinated. Um, so yeah, stealthy is being on the ground, I think, but like there's stealth only gets you to a certain point. Like if I'm going to be stealth, if I'm on an infantry patrol to be stealth or to go stealth or to be, Whatever. It's just to be as quiet as possible and to not get detected until it's time for you to bust some skulls open, right? To attack. Yeah. Once you attack, there's no such thing as like stealth attacks. Like, it, it, there's a few teams like in Vietnam, you've heard the stories of the guys in the bushes. They were maybe successful at getting one or two sentries killed with like a knife. Um, mm -hmm. Or like SWAT teams, they'll have a suppressed 22 pistol to like stealthily remove a sentry which could be a guard dog or something like it's it's a horrible idea but like <laughs> that's what stealth is you you sneak up as close as possible and then you go as loud as possible like there's no right. there's no sam fishers i'm sorry sneaking around cia buildings and then like hiding behind a bush you know like with night like that, that's just not real it doesn't happen so to put that in a video game too like the morisov armor that's not going to really give you any advantage other than like what you're hearing in your own headset. That's the only advantage I can see it giving you. Cause when I wear a certain armor in the game, clunk, 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 you can hear yourself walking around the Morozov armor though. Stealth armor just reduces your sound. That's it. Which will play a big part when the, you know, when our, when our armor and suits and stuff and helmets will be able to start detecting sound. But again, mm. You know, I could wear a bright pink Morisov armor, and if you're only listening for my sound, then I'm, I'm, I'm better off than you are in your, you know, deep black, you know, yes, I don't know, defiance armor or you know, medi even medium armor. Like I, I mean, yeah, it's just, 
it's get the notion of stealth out of your head and, and, and introduce the idea of maybe surprise, right? Like maybe that's a better word for mm-hmm. it. I, I mean, I don't know. Like yeah. you want as much surprise as you can and stealth is a way to get as much surprise. So it's a tool versus a thing. Right. An action. Yeah. The, we did a uh, stealth insertion the other day. This, uh, uh an, an org had a, had jump town lockdown and we couldn't get in. And there was only like three or four of us online at the time. So we're going up against literally 25 people. Um, and what did come in handy, what I will say stealth is like the eclipse bomber, like even in real life, a stealth bomber, it's meant and designed specifically to be unseen by sensors, by radar. Mm-hmm. Same thing with this. Um, one of our players, Chankov, we're talking about you again, Chankov. He's always making waves wherever he goes. Chankov, man. Dude, but he he flew in within 30 kilometers with a stealthed out Eclipse bomber. Um, and he was able to kill an enemy Carrick on the ground, like two or three Redeemers, like over the course of, you know, an hour or so. But um, So stand by for some footage that's going to go up on YouTube. But I was on the ground. We got... We, we we masked the signatures of a Pisces to get as close as possible. We got 12 clicks away, 12 kilometers away. <laughs> and we got, we just jumped out. And within seconds of us leaving the craft, an inferno came down and blew up that, that Pisces. So now we're, there's two of us on the ground and we had 12 kilometers to run. It probably took us close to 30 minutes of in-game time running um, and we just, I just felt like we don't have any tools on the ground. Like the only reason I was able to get to the objective is because I had a mission that I accepted and it was giving me the waypoint. Um, yeah. If that was not, if that was a player controlled area or something, like it would have taken us longer because we would have had to stop and like find out where we were. Like there's no compass mm-hmm. bearing, there's no nothing, uh, there's no anything. And so we hoofed it and like, you know, food and water starts going down. <laughs> like, I'm like, again, everything we've talked about, I don't have any way to eat or drink in my yeah. fucking spacesuit. So anyway. And it pushes people to flying ships. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, that's, that was almost exactly what I was going to say. It just forces us to, like, drop directly on an objective, fly a ship in there. But you can't. If you don't own the air, like, how are you supposed to? I'm, I'm fine with walking 12 clicks to go to a fight. That's what I did last night, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> We're happy with that, but I just need more tools for it. Um, and mm-hmm. it takes a lot of time and I'm, I'm okay with that too. And we were able to successfully find the enemy Carrick. They came down with another Carrick. I guess they didn't learn their lesson. And, uh, we infiltrated it with two men and self-destructed it. And, uh, another way we've talked about expeditiously leaving a spaceship. You cannot do it in a timely fashion. Or if I hit a self-destruct button, like, let me set the timer. Because <laughs> I think it's like 30 seconds. Uh, maybe maybe 45 seconds on that. I'd, I'd have to ask Chankov. He probably knows. He just knows everything. Yeah. But that's a long-ass time. And we couldn't get out of this Carrick fast enough, so we both died in the explosion. But we took out an enemy Carrick at the cost of two. Right. Eh, yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah, that was something. We just need more tools. It's what I come down to. It's the conclusion I'm making. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've talked about stealth. <laughs> I think stealth is a joke right now. Cause like there's no if if your prowler gets seen, it's just a normal fucking dropship. That's right. it. Yeah. There's like if you're more like a bird. Yeah, if you're camouflaged, if you wear white armor on microtech, you're just another dude with a gun. If yeah. someone sees you, you're still just a target. Right. You know, like, <laughs> there's nothing. Now, give me an armor that would cloak me completely. Like, if I'm not moving and it just, like, makes me invisible. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking. That's something that's stealthy, right? But you still, you'd have to move, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't even, I, I didn't even contemplate. Like, Star Citizen, to me, has such a realistic vibe to it, right? Um that something like a cloaking device wasn't even really, you know, when I thought of yeah. a cloaking device, I, I think it's like spoofing your ID. So your ship looks like something else, you know, or, or has a different ID when, when somebody scans you, you know, I would love that. That would be like under electronic warfare, right? Spoofing. IDs. Yeah, for sure. 
masking a signature? What if you could take a ship uh, like a mantis or something, like even just a cutlass? And what if you could make the signature way bigger so it looks like a hammerhead? <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. damn, that's a hammerhead. Yeah, you could go opposite with it, right? Like, oh, I'm not fucking with that hammerhead, and really it's just a Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, something like that. Something with a big yeah. like emitter on it. Yeah, yeah there's put, a lot we could do. It's like duct tape to the top, but you know, it's just putzing along. Yeah. Like there are some elements of like science fiction that are kind of missing, like that mm-hmm. high, high technology, like a you know, a cloaked armor, something like that. Um but I think a yeah. lot of this stuff like helps these like lower, smaller communities or or like individuals right like if if you're just an individual playing star citizen and you have the ability to you know cloak your your pisces to look like a hammerhead when you know like between us and the mighty eight you know we could just have a hammerhead and have two pisces (laughs) parasitically attached to it you know yeah um take some coordination but you know and then all of a sudden you know they're like oh fuck a hammerhead we're not fucking with that and then boop here come two little pisces yeah, it along and dropping dudes off or whatever, you know, deception or whatever it is. Maybe yeah, exactly. Maybe the stealth is the wrong word. What if they used it a, de- a, a deception, like just like this is a dropship that allows for deception. It's a, it's a just it's yeah. not really a stealth ship. It's stealth will get you so far, and then yeah. I mean, there's done. so many cool like uh examples to draw on in sci-fi you know like i mean uh, clearly chris roberts is a star wars fan and we have the msr you know we have all these star wars-esque ships but like and most of us i would say are either trekkies or or star wars nerds um to some degree or battlestar galactica right like stargate uh Mm -hmm. uh the stargate show i never watched it can you tell yeah uh (laughs) But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a Dune is another one. Like, there's plenty of mm-hmm. stuff to draw on where, like, you, you could really implement some kind of a, and, and I'll use the word stealth because it's just the most popular one, right? But to to give components of stealth without like shape shifting a ship or you know cloaking a like making a person into like invisible. <clears throat> I mean, there's. Like, if you can spoof and trick sensors, I mean, that's honestly just as good as, I mean, that's how, um, you know, like, uh, what is it, anti-air radars? Like, they have a level at which you can be detected. If you can get under that level, <clears throat> technically, you're invisible, right? Like, yeah. even though you physically exist. So, you know, just, I guess it's, it's, it's just on them to, like, try to define what that sensor is that ranges or you know how those work more in detail again your word context right mm-hmm. give us more context for how those sensors work especially with fps stuff coming up right like what does that mean is there a material that will block that is there a certain level that it can't penetrate right like and let us put build faults into that stuff and let us find those faults and and take advantage of those things right yeah and like you know, it creates more need for more roles on the ground too. If we sure. have sensors, if if we it can put a sensor in someone's hand, and it can somehow mm-hmm. benefit an air squadron, right? Right. Um, or an attack. Like, what if there's passive sensors we could throw down? Right. Sure. A ground team could essentially hike all around an objective covertly, placing these passive sensors to gain. All sorts of information. An advantage in that An area. Advantage. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what's missing. We were talking about it at Jump Town. There's not enough teamwork elements there. Like, yeah, we can all move boxes as a team, but, like, there's not really a reward because, you know, somebody else will get the boxes at the same rate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can well, load. And, and a, there's a limit, too, of how many people can actually be in there before there's too many people there, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I would argue that if you had 15 people, that's probably close to too many, you know, and we're going in there with 20 plus every time. Yep. It is. And so a lot of guys just end up standing around or we could create our own gameplay or, you know, whatever, like we, we patrol do. little RPing stuff, you yeah, know, and it, it, it is useful sometimes. But. It is. Yeah, we're reinforcing with ballistas. We're doing stuff. Yep. So we're, we're getting a chance to exercise our SOPs, but. Um, you know, we have we have hacking chips in the game. Like, you know, it would be cool to see someone use a chip to hack a door. 
And that's yeah. a one time use chip. So, you know, if you get in the door and like, yeah, now you're in the drug lab, like it's just open to the public. doesn't make sense. You know, like, yeah. uh, let us hack it. Like that makes more time is of the essence. That means you need to bring special equipment to access the drugs. You can't just show up in an undersuit and be like, Hey, Dahudore. Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like jump town safe, jump town safe money, money. Like there's put some planning behind it. If this is a, a legit illegal drug lab, like it, maybe there's some booby traps. I don't know. Like, Let's yeah. hack it. I, I have a feeling this machine. won't be our, our most popular just the topic because I, I'm sure there will be a lot of people that listen to this and go, yeah, n- none of that sounds fun to me. But remember, <laughs> we said it all the way back in, in the first episode. We're we're nutty. We're crazy. We're, we're nutty. We're moronically nutty. Like we want that. We want that pain and that and that suffering. Like if you play Star Citizen, you're already a masochist, right? We want to go deeper <laughs> down that, that yeah. rabbit hole. Yeah, if you enjoy 30Ks. You know, and uh, bugs and resetting you your character once a week. Yeah, you're a masochist and a star citizen backer. That's a good point, dude. Like, you know, we, we want difficulty so we yeah. as a team can overcome it. And if you're right. by yourself, like, I'm sorry, even like the greatest burglar of all time, like go watch any heist movie, you know, son of a bitch. I'm in, you know, <laughs> I, I'm yeah, putting right. together a team for a heist. Because people need to do certain things for for something for that outcome to be achieved. So, like, sure. give us those, CIG. Mm-hmm. Like, stop thinking about the solo player. There's plenty of solo gameplay for them. And, like, there's levels of gameplay that cannot be accessed in any video game unless you have friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, think about it. Like, Mario Kart, yeah. you will get so good at beating all of the NPC racers... That's it. Until you go into a multiplayer with friends, and then it unlocks so much more gameplay, so much more challenge. So, like, yeah, build Jump it, Town around a team. Sorry, yeah, and I agree. I don't disagree. I, I mean, I think Xeno Threat was maybe a better uh, CIG driven event. For oh, absolutely. Not only the the individual, but the the team as well. Because as an individual, you can go grab a few boxes and go do your thing, and right, like, you can kind of putts back and forth and all of that. And it, it felt like the teamwork in Xeno threat was just way more rewarding than any fucking money I was making off of it. Right. Yes. And I don't get that same feeling from jump town, but I, I want to, one of our uh, friends, that's a, 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 an actual game developer. Like w- we were discussing stuff with him about it. And um, he made a pretty good point that, you know, you know, star citizen should, should pay attention to the single player of their game. Like, I don't think he said it will make or break it, but you know, it's important to to focus on that. But I think jump town is in this weird, like I, I almost, I almost look at like the, oh, the, the, the team oriented backers versus the, like the individual backers that play the game. Right. Like uh step brothers at the end of step brothers, when Will Ferrell and his brother are hugging, you know, like it's just weird. Like, Oh, this is awkward hug. We're like, yeah, we both yeah, like awkward, the same You game. know what I mean? It's, that's what I feel <laughs> jump town is. is it, it doesn't really pander to like the individual. It doesn't really pander to, or it doesn't like not pander is not the right word, but um, it doesn't really cater to the individual, but it doesn't really cater to teams either. And I guess yes. if you find an empty server and you're with a couple of guys, it can be really lucrative, but it's still very time consuming. Yeah, But then, like, if you get more than 10 guys from, you know, a single entity together, it's, like, boring and not as lucrative. So it's, like, it's in this weird – and I know they'll tweak it and, and and make some tweaks and stuff. And that's why we're talking about it because, you know, this is just us. Like, I didn't go to Spectrum to tell you about how I feel about Jump Town. I'm doing it in, in a podcast, right? Yeah. Um, because fuck writing. I can't <laughs> spell to save my life. Um but I can I can articulate w- what I'm thinking like, much, but yeah, hand jet, yeah, with words, and, especially if you do this and stuff. So this just like helps people yeah, right. articulate, right? Like that, Chris Roberts. This is jump town right now. Yeah. Can we yeah. get camera can we two? Get, uh, camera can one. Get, yeah, can, camera can two. Chris Roberts, like the GIF, <laughs> doing something. We yeah, well, we should have that. I'll just have Mal post it right in the center it should there. be on a hot key you know yeah, every time we go to just point. talk about something weird and star citizen it's just chris roberts doing this <laughs> yes yeah okay we'll, we'll put that in for the next episode <laughs> um yeah and if you're listening on spotify you have no idea what we're doing <laughs> so none whatsoever just go check it out uh on, yep. on the youtube too 
if you want to see it. But yeah. Um, yeah, that brings us to the next point I want to end on, and we'll we'll wrap it up here. But the the complacency level of players is like unreal. Did we talk about? Yeah. Well, we didn't talk about complacency yet. We kind of brushed on it. Um, but no, yeah, the yeah. you know if you do have a few friends, you can go be very lucrative at Jump Town. But then one guy in a stock Gladius can come ruin your fun, 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 fun. Mm. It's like if you're not ready to face threats in the verse, like why are you playing the game? Is my question. And facing a threat could be evacuating, leaving, running. Totally viable. If you have a huge yeah. score or, you know, maybe you're like, maybe I'm going to jump servers. That's too, that's doable too. Like you have the choice to do that. And like, if you don't have friends in the game, like you're just not safe. Even from PvE. Yeah, you should, you should be scared if you're playing by yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's a big world out there. And like, I, we, we've right. talked to a guy too. He's like, I've, I've done solo bunkers and he's like, I die a lot. I'm like, well, Get some friends. Come with us. We'll show you. Yeah. Um. I I wanted to talk to you about that because we took him out last night. Apparently. Uh. And he got oh, his nice. first taste of a, a teamwork. In Star Citizen, a lot of people play this game solo, and they have no idea that there are these levels of gameplay you can unlock if you just have a good group of people you play with. Some people have yeah, a group really of two, three, four. That's impressive. That's fun. You can do a lot. But when you unlock the power of like 10, 15, 20 people and you're in an organized group, um, sometimes it's not the most fun gameplay, but like it is so rewarding to be a part of a team. And that's what we're looking for. If that doesn't appeal to you guys, you know, just keep listening and take what you can from us. But um, at the complacency level, people just, they're not prepared for a fight. Well, and I think that's CIG's fault to an extent, right? Like, up until this year, everything has sort of revolved around that individual. And now they are making strides to, to like, try to incorporate orgs, larger orgs or larger groups of people in, I, I think, Xenothread. I keep bringing Xenothread up. It's, like, my favorite event. Um, I think that's one of those great examples of, like, CIG going, how the fuck do we make a scalable event for the individual to, like, 100 fucking players? How do we do that? And I think Xenothreat was that answer, right? So take whatever you did in Xenothreat, Bravo team that created Xenothreat, and bring those guys in to fix Jump Town and nine, you know, Nine Tails and stuff. Yeah, and and Jump Town is uh, Xeno is a PVE event, and it could be mm -hmm. PVP if you chose to like you know be an actual criminal and join right. that, uh, which is cool. Uh, but Jump Town is straight up PVP. Yeah. Right. And and, and I, I digress it, yeah. a little bit there, but. You shouldn't be like the, the whole uh, idea of complacency. Like it should not be flipped on and off for, you know, like well said, um, you know, an event, right? Like, oh, jump town. So now I can't can't be complacent. Right. For example. But everybody <laughs> is because they're like jump town safe. Yes. Uh, OK, well, I'm just fucking frolic all the way to jump town. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like you should always be. And, and we've even gone an extra step and for lack of a better term hired a pirate org to hunt us yeah Just yeah we've forever right like and that's to keep our complacency our, our uh yeah we don't want to down complacent. yeah and uh, you know yeah shout out to them uh moadib and uh, that's his name <laughs> and it's the fremen pirate organization i think is his name yep and uh yep. we yeah some people they run away when you drop the p word private or not private, <laughs> that's privateers, sorry, that's our P word. Um, when you talk, <laughs> when you drop private, <laughs> I can't even say it, pirate. pirate. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> pirate. 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 Uh, yeah. Sorry, they some do. people run away when they hear the word pirate. They're like, uh, I don't want to do that. We're an honorable org, okay? We don't like griefing. But like, it's not whatever. Griefing. It's not. It's a mechanic. It's a mechanic in the game. And like, there's griefers and then I think then they're doing pirates. a really cool job. Yeah, I think they're. I think this pirate org, right? Like this, this bad guy org is doing really cool stuff. To like, they are. You know, they're not. They're not out there to just kill you. Like they want to extort you. Yeah, I think. I, I think that should be rewarded with gameplay. You know, um, and they honor their word. That's too. awesome. It's important. Yeah, they honor their word, and uh, they have some cool videos. Maybe we'll link it here. But uh, shout out to yeah. Moa uh, Deep, uh, the Fremen pirate org. Such a cool reference too. <laughs> yeah, right. But he's yeah, hunting so cool. us. If he captures the standing order is. If he captures 
Brander's privateer's leadership. Um, mm-hmm. He's got to figure that out because uh, he, right. he might. We might throw. He's he, he's going to have a few curveballs hit him. You know. So if you're watching this podcast, Moadib, just be ready, bro. But the uh, ready. Yeah, be ready. So be complacent. If he captures one of us alive, it's a million dollars. We might even up it to like two or three. We don't know. Yeah, we'll start with right. a mill and see what happens. Uh, yeah. But that's it. And he's going to hold that leader ransom, and then we pay him a million dollars, and he wins. We could pay him, or we could mobilize a group of dudes to go bust go bust the, yeah. the leadership out. Go bust right? him like, down. Yeah. And because of the game mechanics now currently, it's hard to be a pirate. <laughs> Let's sympathize yeah, with them. Because people it's hard have, out here for a pirate. Yeah, they have options. Because if you alt F4, there's a high chance that you're going to get your shit back. Um so you can alt, you can just exit the game if you're being held hostage by a pirate. You can just alt F four and your ship should be back because like they have these safeguards against thirty Ks. So mm-hmm. your cargo can be safe, and I don't know the full mechanics on it. He could probably explain it better. But people, he'll he'll hold a ship hostage, and then the guy will just leave or log off or backspace or like whatever, and you're like, crap. Like, it doesn't really favor that style of gameplay because how do you hold someone hostage who can just log out at any time with no... Yeah. I think there there are I mean, some... There's games that stuff, do, yeah. do do a good job at, like, combat. Like it's called combat logging, or at least that's the term I'm familiar with. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it's the act of, like, in the middle of an engagement, you know you're going to die and you don't want to lose your shit, so you just, you just log out, right? Like, you don't yeah. want to engage until you log out and so daisy daisy mod did a really good job of it and then i think daisy the standalone does a pretty good job of it as well where your character persists you know past 10 seconds when you lock you know for 10 15 seconds Once you after log. you alt f4 or log out or whatever like i don't think that's something that should be implemented now with all the bugs but later down the road right like i think that's something you could absolutely in- implement to prevent that kind of behavior from happening, you know? Yeah, and it would be cool to see if you actually log off in a persistent way. Like, you know, if you've played a game like, I think, like Daisy or Ark Survival. I don't know if it's in Daisy, but like Ark Survival, you build a base around mm-hmm. your character because when you log off, like your body is still in the game with all yeah. of your equipment. So that Yeah, would be I mean, cool. that would be cool to see as well. Yeah, so like you, you log in down on your hammerhead and your whole crew is like still logged off in their beds. Um, yeah. Or what if it was like a cryo tube, you know? So <laughs> made more sense canonically or l- lore wise. But um, right. yeah, just get onto a ship and there's just a bunch of dead, not dead, but just yeah. flopped bodies just, on the floor that are logged yeah. up. Yeah. Just a bunch of sleeping beauties, like right. oh, John, Johnny's not logged in. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Rust does something bed. similar too, right? Doesn't your body persist when you yeah. log out in Rust? Yeah, a lot of those yeah. games like that do. Rust. Yep. Ark Survival. Um, Conan Exiles too is a fun one, but yeah, they, yeah. there's a we lot. We digressed of stuff like that. hard from uh, complacency. Complacency but. though, but that's the thing. <laughs> Games like that, you can get complacent and leave. You know, yeah. Like I've, I've played with groups and we're playing PvP, and like we're chewing somebody out for leaving the fucking front door open. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, here we are playing Ark Survival. Yeah. We're like, you almost let all the Raptors escape. You gotta close yeah. that fucking door. <laughs> Like, yeah, oh, and when sorry. they start, when CIG starts turning on like org features where, you know, we have an org hanger and there's a lock and it's a physical a place that you have to go and visit. Like, I mean, yeah, all those considerations will, you know, so complacency. Anyways, the, the whole idea of, <laughs> about talking about Maldiv and, and his pirate org is that we wanted to not be complacent. Yes. Uh, and I'm guilty of this 1000%. Like, we I all are. will do bunker missions and I will just run into the bunker, park right up on the front door, run into the bunker. And then run out, you know, like I have had no reason to not do that, but now mm-hmm. I do. And so I have to take a little bit more precaution when I'm flying around in the berths. And yeah. I like it. I love it. I, I'm on my toes now when I play this game. It's real easy to take shortcuts too when you're trying to grind for cash yeah, for or sure. reputation so you can get more missions. So like there's always, gamers are always going to take a shortcut, you know. And yeah. I see that bleeding into jump town. And so... I just took it upon myself to uh, attack everyone at Jumptown. It was a lot of fun, and I made a lot of people mad. And uh, also just, like, the complacency of, of like, this mentality. Like, uh, a player, like, let's say I'm just a random player, and I buy an Ares Starfighter Inferno, right? And I'm like, yeah, (laughs) I'm going to use it. 
Um, but then they don't know how to fly it or fight it or fight in it, or they don't pursue the skills needed to go use it. So then when a gladius comes along, I can't even tell you. I, I killed probably 15. And this is in the space of two to three hours. And it was I think it was the same people a couple times because the server was low populated, but it was probably like 30 or 40. And I probably killed 15. I didn't die the insane, for three hours, and I'm engaging in combat. And I was like, I'm not even that good of a fighter pilot. I like to focus right. on the ground, but I do like to fly on occasion. And I killed 15 Ion Ares, uh, Infernos and Ares, no, like hands down. And I was like, man. And I, I kind of was getting chatty with him. I'm like, you guys fly like NPCs. I was like, serious. <laughs> like, this is a concern. I've been in this server for three hours engaging in straight-up ship-to-ship combat, and I haven't died once. I, I, I blew right. up Connies that were being solo-manned. I blew up Redeemers that were being solo-manned, like a Retaliator even. Uh, he flew off, but like, you know, and then every single, every Starfighter was just an Ares Starfighter. Like, big gun, bring it. Like, no. I'm in a Gladius stock, and I won. I, like, I didn't die. It was insane. Yeah. The only time I died was when teamwork actually happened. Okay, they baited me. So hats off to these guys. I've been doing this for three hours. I got complacent. <laughs> and I'm fucking, this Redeemer shows up, and I didn't know they had a crew. So I'm like hitting him. And then all of a sudden, the turrets go active. Freaking smoke me. I'm like, oh my gosh, so fast. <laughs> I'm like that. And in the chat, I was like, finally, some goddamn teamwork. Thank yeah. you, Redeemer, for actually being a manned crew. <laughs> I was like, so that's the complacency level I was talking about. Like people going to jump town yeah. in light armor with like a pistol. Or and then expecting their mad. redeemer piloted by themselves to be this awesome badass <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah. It's not meant for that. Right? No. Like it's meant to have those fucking turrets up. And if those turrets are up. It's mean. It's a scary fucking thing. It's mean. Yeah. yeah same thing with three guys in heavy armor while two guys load drugs. Like that's scary. You, right. you're not complacent there. You know, you're watching your doors. You're watching, you're, you're calling out who's coming in, who are you talking to? Like, what's your plan? Like, what's who's in the air? Who's above you, right? Is it clear to move? No, it's not clear to move. Stay on the ground. Okay, cool, right? Like, that level of communication and complacency I see happening in the game, so I thought we'd talk about it for a little bit. Um, and also the complacency in your org, too, like running into bunkers. You already, you already talked about that. Like, your individual actions and then... I just think everybody's complacent in this star citizen community. That's my, yeah, that's my statement. Well, it harkens back to an episode we talked about too, you know, with <coughs> like, are you, are you looking at the action or are you looking where you're supposed to be looking? Right. Yeah. And that, you know, that's a form of complacency as well is like, well, all the shootings going on over there. So I'm going to look that way. But yeah. then here comes Daft and his gladius by himself. And yeah. Kills all of you because <laughs> you, you know, like, Yeah. It's funny that it's only in a Star Citizen game can you get bitched at in the chat for destroying someone's for ship. Playing the game in a PvP like this is a PvP event, and here I come yeah. blowing up their ship, player versus player, and they're like, "You're a jerk for doing that." <laughs> We're not jerks. Well, we well we are. I'm, I'm a jerk, but we're yeah. jerks. We're, we're just we're, we're just professional game, you know? jerks, man. That's it. We want you to play the game too. Yeah. Um, well, cool. I, that's all I got for today. You got any other topics you want to hit, Echo? No, man. I think we did. I think this was a cool, cool episode. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. This is a lot of cool talking points here. There was. And as again, always, let us know your points as well. Tell us that we're dipshits. We love the feedback. Join us in the Gilded, and uh, we've got a whole little place over there set up for stuck in the nail. Mm -hmm. um, conversations. So please for, feel free to hop in, use it. Tell us how much you hate us. Tell us how much we're an idiot or whatever. Or yeah. Yeah. Send it around. Embarrass us. Yeah. Um, but we appreciate Again, thank you for all this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I appreciate <laughs> all the support from everybody. It's been, I, I'm just humbled, man. I, I've, I'm absolutely humbled. It is great, yeah. And again, a big thank you to CIG. Thanks for working your asses off to give us a stable Dude. patch for Christmas. It was a great gift. Um, we're looking forward to it. We're always going to criticize you, but we're always going to love your game too. So always Merry Christmas, yeah. Merry uh, Christmas, CIG, and Happy and New Year. 
happy new year yeah. you filthy animals well that's it from us this is episode five coming to an end of stuck in the nail and uh we'll see you on the ground <laughs>